Hey guys, welcome back to The Curly Reader. My name is Amanda and today I wanna to share with you my 15 all-time favorite middle grade books. Okay, so you guys all know that I love middle grade. I read a lot of middle grade. Like, it's just part of my reading persona um, is that I just, I absolutely love middle grade. And so I thought it'd be fun today being the first day of middle grade March to share with you my 15 all-time favorite middle grade books. Um, when I was making my list, I was just like thinking of books off the top of my head that I knew I needed to include. And initially when I was planning this video, I was gonna do my top 10 and then I listed more than 10 and I couldn't narrow it down. So we have our top 15. That's as, that's as close as I could get. Um, but I hope that you find some really good recommendations in this stack. Um, I have a few different genres represented here. And ironically enough, um, my favorite adult genres also happen to be my favorite middle grade genres. So that's going to be graphic novels, historical fiction, contemporary, a little bit of sci-fi, and some older books too. Um, I have one that I consider a classic, but it's definitely a modern classic because I think it was written in the 80s. I'm going to check really quick. Um, I'm, I think it was written in the 80s, and so I know that's not technically a classic. Um, yeah, it's more of a modern classic, but I digress. So that's kind of the genres represented here. I just, I think it's very interesting that my favorite genres in adult are also my favorite genres in middle grade. I never really took the time to think about it until I put this stack together. Um, so anyway, let's just get into this. These are not ranked in order because I already narrowed it down to 15. Guys, I can't, that's too much brain work. I cannot put these, rank these in order. It's just not possible. I don't know if I could pick a top one. Ugh, it'd just be too hard. But we're just gonna kind of group them in genre categories and go from there. So the first grouping that I wanna share with you are my two graphic novels that are on this list. These are both contemporary graphic novels. Um, and the first one is Roller Girl by Victoria Jameson. Most of you have probably heard, heard me mention this before, um, but this is about a little girl, Astrid, who really gets into roller derby. Um, her mom is very into like exposing her to different things. And she, so she takes her and one of her friends to a roller derby match. I don't think that's the right word. Um, but they go and they watch roller derby and Astrid decides she wants to do this. So she signs up for a camp. Um, her friend who she kind of wants to come along with her would rather do dance. And so you have that kind of dynamic there about how to address friendship when your friendship starts to kind of separate in the middle school years. Um, and then also as Astrid starts getting into roller skating, she finds out she's not very good at it. Um, and so this really has to do a lot with perseverance and teamwork. Um, I absolutely love this. I initially read this because my oldest daughter um, had requested that I buy it. She had read it before she requested that I buy it. She like was reading it on repeat. And so I'm like, I wanna check this out and see what this is. Um, and so yeah, this did win a Newbery Honor. It is fantastic. So this is my first graphic novel that is on this list. And then my second graphic novel that is on this list is Brave by Svetlana Chvakova. Um, this is the second book in the what is it? It's like Sunny Berry Brook Middle School um, companion series. So there's Awkward, Brave, and Crush. Brave is the second one. Um, and this book follows Jensen, who is just kind of that awkward kid that's always on the periphery of friend groups. He never really feels like he belongs anywhere. And so he just, he gets picked on a lot, but he doesn't really recognize it as bullying and comes to find out that, um, these two girls that are on the school newspaper want him to like interview for the paper and he finds out that they want to interview him because they think he's being bullied. And this discusses a lot about friends and what friendships should look like and what good healthy friendships look like but also what bullying looks like. And um, when you're being teased about things, how to voice you know, use your voice and let people know that you're not okay with them saying things. And it was just so good. Um, I particularly like this one to share with kids of middle grade, I would say like fourth grade and up um, age range to just 
give them that exposure to things but I really appreciated the messages that were in this book as well um, and so this is my second one my second graphic novel okay so now let's move on to contemporary since we're already talking about contemporary and so the first one that I want to talk about is Macy McMillan and the Rainbow Goddess by Sherry Green. This is a book told in verse. This follows Macy and she is deaf. Um, she lives with her mom. It's always just been her and her mom but now her mom's getting remarried and she and her mom are going to be moving in with her new stepdad and twin sisters and she's not exactly thrilled about it. Um, and so her mom sends her next door to help her elder neighbor pack her elderly neighbor is getting ready to move into an assisted living facility but her neighbor doesn't know sign language and so she can't communicate with Macy and that doesn't stop them from becoming fast friends um, this is a book told in verse and I just thought this was absolutely beautiful um, some of the passages in here were just so touching and I absolutely love this one and it it was just, it might have been like the right book at the right time for me sort of situation, but I just found it so endearing. And like I said, some of the passages were just like really, really touched me. Anne of Green Gables is mentioned in this and it was just so beautiful. So um, this is one of my absolute favorite books in verse. Um, another contemporary that I absolutely love is Wish Tree by Catherine Applegate. Um, this is one that I actually read because of Krista. Um, I think it might have been the first or second, I think it was the first middle grade March ever. Um, Krista read this and was raving about it and this was before I even had a booktube channel and I went and I listened to it and it was okay. Um, I really enjoyed it but it wasn't anything like knock my socks off and then last year when we were homeschooling our kids we were doing a tree unit study and I read this out loud to them and that just like it, it took this book to a whole new level for me um, and now this is absolutely one of my all-time favorite books. Um, this is a this is a book that is told from the tree's perspective. Um, so Red is a red oak tree um, and Red uh, can talk to the animals and stuff that live in the tree and but it cannot com it cannot communicate with humans and there are two kids that live kind of under the branches of this tree it the tree is in the middle of these two houses and one of the kids is a refugee a Middle Eastern refugee and the other kid comes from a family that has a lot of prejudices against the first family um, and so the special thing about red is red is a wish tree which means every spring on a certain day the community comes and they tie their wishes to red's branches um, and so wish day is coming upon them and they're running into issues with the property owner wanting to cut the tree down and the kids and what's going on with the bullying and the friendship that's growing there and how red kind of intervenes a little bit it is such a beautiful beautiful book it is a very very quick read um, there's not a lot of words on each page there's a lot of illustrations and it is absolutely beautiful absolutely beautiful 110 percent you should read that book Okay, um, another contemporary book that I feel like will be on everybody's favorites list is Wonder by R.J. Palacio. Um, this is a book that I feel a lot of kids read in school. Um, my older two girls were in like mid elementary school when the movie came out and the school, the PTA paid for the entire school to go see the movie. And so before they went and saw the movie, the upper grades read this and then there's like a picture book adaptation of this that the like the kindergarten, first and second grade read. Um, and so both of my girls have read this and it is such a good book on what it's what's on the inside that matters sort of thing. I like I lost my train of thought there for a minute. Um, it is as a parent life-changing um it is just such an amazingly written book this is a book that follows Augie who has some facial deformities he's always been homeschooled and he is getting ready to go into a um I think it's private school setting um for the first time and he it's about him making friends and being bullied and kind of going on with his life but this is a book that is told from his point of view as well as a few other points of view um one of those being his sister and that was something that I really appreciated is that you get to hear from the sibling of a kid with special needs um, who oftentimes gets a lot of attention and uh, that sibling can a lot of times be kind of pushed to the side and 
you really felt compassion for his sister. Um, I think her name was Vivian. V maybe was her name. Um, but it was just, it's such an amazing book. And if you haven't read it yet, I don't know why, but you should, because it is just one of those books that I feel like every teacher has read out loud to their class and for good reason. All right. Um, a, let's see, where are we at? Okay. The one that I will say is more of like, I feel like a classic, but it was written in 1988. So probably not, um, is Matilda by Roald Dahl. Um, not all of Roald Dahl's books are created equal. Let's be clear. Matilda is fantastic. I remember my teacher reading this out loud to us in fifth grade and falling in love with this story. And then I feel like shortly after is when the movie came out. Um, but this is the book of Matilda who is very gifted and her parents don't appreciate that. They're very much just like sit in front of the TV, watch TV, eat junk food, swindle people at a used car dealership people. And so when she's at school, a lot of times she's bored. She's not really given opportunities. She goes to a school where a the principal or headmaster is very, um, uh, what's the right word? <laughs> for Mrs. Trunchbull. Um, she's just very aggressive and very strict. And But Matilda's teacher is not. And Matilda's teacher sees her for who she is. And Matilda forms this relationship with her teacher that really makes her shine. And it is such a beautiful book. And I just, I love it to pieces. And so, yeah, if you haven't read Matilda yet, I highly, highly recommend it. Okay. Um, now the one that I would consider kind of fantasy, kind of historical fiction, um, and that of course is Sweep, The Story of a Girl and Her Monster by Jonathan Oxier. Um, this was the group read for year two of middle grade March. I read it then and fell in love. And then I read it last year out loud to my kids and fell in love again. And this book is so beautiful. Um, it follows, what's the girl's name? Nan, I believe. Yeah. Nan, who is a chimney sweep. Um, she's a little girl who is a chimney sweep in Victorian London. And she one day gets caught in a chimney and somehow escapes. And after she escapes, finds Charlie, who is a golem. He is a soot golem. And so you get some um, explanation in here on golems and Jewish folklore and kind of how they came to be. Um, but really, this is the story of Nan and Charlie and Nan kind of surviving um, and a little bit of her history, how she came to be this it does Nan is an orphan in this book. Um, and so her and Charlie are kind of on their own. Um, it is absolutely beautiful. The like tagline I feel like of this book is you save yourself by saving others. And I feel like it, it was just so well done. I love this book so much. Um, there are a couple, I will say, scenes that if you are reading this with little littles that can be a little scary, um, specifically talking about fire and burning flesh. So, you know, um, use your discretion a little bit on that. But other than that, like my kids all adored this book as well. Um, and it is just so beautifully written. So that is my like one dabble into fantasy more historical. Okay, checking my piles to make sure I'm not missing anything because you guys think that I could be organized, but no. All right, sci-fi. Um, first, I have two sci-fi books. So the first of which is Orion Lost by Alastair Chisholm. This was my favorite book of middle grade March last year. I loved this book. Um, this is a UK release book, but you can still buy it, you know, Book Depository, Amazon, things like that um, here in the U.S., um, but this follows, what is her name, Beth, who is 13 years old. This is a little bit of a higher middle grade, I would say. Um, as is common, I find with a lot of UK releases, there are a couple of like swear words in it. Um, so nothing like super intense or anything like that, but just parental discretion. Um, but Beth is 13 in here and she is on a spaceship set for another planet and along the way something happens and a lot all of the parents have been kind of incapacitated so this small group of 13 year olds has to figure out where they are in the universe and how to get them back to where they were supposed to be along the way they encounter other beings and other people who they don't know if they can trust and it was just so well done I loved it I was on the edge of my seat 
Um, I felt like the alien thing in here was just handled so well. Like I, I was shocked. So it was just really good. Um, so I definitely recommend this one if you're into middle grade sci-fi. Even if you're not, I think it's fantastic. And then the other sci-fi that I would be remiss to leave off this list is this year's Newberry winner that I recently read, and that is The Last Quintista um, by Donna Barbara Higuera. Um, this is, oh my goodness, this is so beautiful. First of all, this cover, guys. Oh my goodness, so beautiful. Um, but this follows, what's her name? Petra? Petra Pena, who, um, Hallie's Comet is getting ready to hit Earth, and so they're evacuating a small selection of people to kind of go out into space and restart humanity. Um, and her parents are world-renowned botanists, and so her parents and her and her brother get to go. And so they're boarding this spaceship to be shot out into space, and the only problem is that once they get there, she finds out that this like small faction of people has kind of taken over and brainwashed everyone, kind of made everybody forget, like wipe their brains of all of their memories of the world that they left. And they want everybody to get along and everybody to be pacified and everything's for the collective. And um, she, for some reason, still has her memories. And so this is really a story about the importance of teaching history and the importance the importance of storytelling um, because the faction that has kind of taken over doesn't want any of that. They don't want to remember the earth that they came from. They don't want any of the stories to be told. Um, and Petra really loved the stories that her abuelita used to tell her and she wants to continue that. And so the main like theme of this book is the importance of storytelling and teaching history and but in a sci-fi setting and it was so beautiful. Um, if it tells you anything, Krista, my friend from Books and Jams, does not really care for sci-fi at all. Like when I read this last year, she was like, that does not sound good at all. Like she is not a sci-fi fan. She read this and loved it. It is so beautiful. So definitely check this one out. And like I said, it won the Newberry this year and it was so well-deserved. It was amazing. Okay. And then I have five historical fiction on this list. So I am who I am, guys. I mean, it's just, it is what it is. Um, the first one on that list is Echo by Pam Munoz Ryan. Pam Munoz Ryan is one of my favorite middle grade authors. I just, I adore her writing. And Echo is an amazing book, but more than that, it's an amazing audiobook. Um, because this book follows a magical harmonica, um, which visits three different kids at three different times. And this story weaves those stories together of those three different children. Um, one is in Germany, right when the right when World War II starts breaking out. Um, one is in New England around the same time, and then one is in California, um, and is kind of around um, when the Japanese were sent to the internment camps and what happened with their properties when that happened and all of that. So um, those are kind of the three scenarios that the kids are in, but music plays such a big role in this book, um, which is why the audiobook is so good because you get to hear a lot of that music. You get to hear the harmonica being played. Um, and like I said, all of it weaves together magically in the end, and it is so, 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 so good. It's a bit of a chunker, especially for a middle grade book but it's totally worth every second guaranteed. Um, the next middle or the next historical fiction that I absolutely love, um, I read last year and that is Leaving Lyman by Lisa Klein Ransom. Um, this is the second book in a companion series by Lisa Klein Ransom, the first of which is um, Finding Langston, which is also fantastic. But this one is my favorite of the three. Um, and the reason why is because in this book, we're following the bully from the first book. So in the first book, Lyman is a bully who is bullying Langston. Um, and here we get Lyman's backstory and what happened with him. Um, Lyman is from Alabama and due to some, you know, situations, his father is in Parchman Penitentiary and he has been in the care of his grandparents for a while. His mom left, something happens with his grandparents and he now has to go live with his aunt and uncle in Milwaukee. Um, he does that for a while and then they come to a point where they can't really take care of him anymore. So he goes to live with his mom in Chicago. 
um, and his mom and his stepdad and things are not great there um, he starts going to school he starts getting into a lot of trouble things are not great at home and you really get kind of a look behind the curtain of what's going on in this kid's life that is causing him to act out in the ways that he is um, there's a scene towards the end of this book where Lyman talks to his dad and I was like physically heaving sobbing when he was talking to his dad because it just broke my heart um, this is a book that completely shattered my heart but I loved it because it gave me such a different perspective on troubled kids and kind of kids that act out in ways that we don't understand and what might be going on at home for them that we don't see um, and giving kids like that a little bit of grace because they're kids and they don't understand you know and they don't know any better and so anyway this was just such a it's so short too and the narrator for these audiobooks um Dion Graham I believe is the narrator and he is perfection so um that is my second um historical fiction um all right my third one is one that I have mentioned so many times on my channel and I hate mentioning it because it's out of print and that is Jefferson Sons by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley um Kimberly Brubaker Bradley also wrote The War That Saved My Life which almost made this list but these other ones I like just a little bit more um she also wrote Fighting Words which is another amazing book but this is my favorite one this follows the children of Thomas Jefferson and Sally Hemings which is one of his, was one of his slaves um, and it follows these kids and kind of what their expectations are of their father um, their life growing up um, unkept promises from their father you get a really good view of Monticello and the climate at Monticello and what was going on there um, it was just beautiful um, I well as beautiful as it can be given the subject matter the writing was really well done it was hard subject matter the writing was really well done um this is a book that will rip your heart out and the end just like made me want to vomit and but not from like disgustingness it was just like I felt so disgusted by what was happening but not from like gory stuff if that makes sense but it also like made me want to cry and hug the book all at the same time. It was just the weirdest like combination of things. Um, it was very powerful. This book was very powerful. Um, I highly suggest seeing if your library has this book because like I said it is out of print. Um, I think you might be able to get it on like a Kindle version maybe um, on Amazon. I will check. If so I will link it below. Um, but definitely check to see if your library has it. Um, and read it because it is so good um, all right and then the next one that I have here is another one that I read last year that I adored and that is The Length of a String by Alyssa Brent Wiseman this is one that follows Amani I believe let me double check that name I don't want to tell you the wrong thing oh, come on um, yeah Amani who is black and she was adopted by a Jewish family at a young age um, and so she has been raised Jewish she's getting ready for her bat mitzvah I ruin this every time I can never remember it every single time um and yeah let's see it doesn't say so anyway she's getting ready for her bat mitzvah and she has decided that she wants to ask her parents if she can try to look for her birth parents um she's really nervous about this she has a lot of hesitation about this and as she's kind of amping herself up getting ready to ask them her great-grandmother passes away and so they are sitting shiva for her great-grandmother and she finds out that her great-grandmother left her all of her books her and her cousin like her and her brother and their cousin they all the grandkids get all of her books and so as they're going through her books she finds her journal and so she starts reading her great-grandmother's journal from when her great-grandmother was escaping Luxembourg during World War II and so you're kind of getting dual timelines in that you're getting this these journal entries from World War II but then also the present day kind of what's going on with Amani and school and she has to do a holocaust project for um, her bat mitzvah as well and so she's kind of figuring that out um, there's a lot of things at play here I love the journal entry the journal aspect of this book um, it's about Luxembourg which is a very small country that it you don't really hear a lot about um, and so it's kind of obscure it was just there were so many things about this book that I absolutely adored 
I cried multiple times reading this and it was just, I loved it. I will say Amani's mom, not a great person. I kind of wanted to punch her in the throat, which is a very harsh thing to say, but she was just not good. She really annoyed me. Um, but I could look past that because the rest of the book was so good. Um, but just, just know that going into it. Um, especially as an adoptive mom of someone of a different race, she was just not handling situations well at all. And so know that going in, but the history aspect of this, the cultural aspect of this, so good. And so that one definitely had to go on the list. And then the last one, which is one that I read two years ago, I think for middle grade March that I love. And that of course is Until Tomorrow, Mr. Mars Wars by Sheila O'Connor. Um, this is a story set during the Vietnam War and follows, what is the little girl's name, Rini? Rini Kelly, who gets a paper route and she goes around at the beginning and introduces herself to all of her clients. And this Mr. Marsworth does not answer the door. And so she leaves him a letter and he never responds. And she's very persistent. She keeps leaving him letters and leaving him letters and leaving him letters and he finally responds. And so this is a book told in entirely in letter format um, and it has it follows Rini and Mr. Marsworth and their correspondence back and forth. Mr. Marsworth is a recluse. He's an elderly man and this really has a lot to do with pacifism and Rini is really scared because her brother is getting ready to graduate high school and she's really scared that he's going to be um, called up for the draft and he she just doesn't want that for him and so she's trying to figure out how to get him to not be drafted and she's talking with Mr. Marsworth a lot about this and then also just kind of the cultural climate in the Midwest during the Vietnam War and how they felt about certain things specifically pacifism and um, conscientious objectors and things like that and um, just I, the, the whole climate in the U.S. during the Vietnam War was insanity. Um, there were a lot of things going on, a lot of differing opinions, um, and this just, you know, in a middle grade way approaches some of that. And so it's really good. It's a really, really quick read, like I said, because it's all letters and it's so well done. So this is my last one to share with you. Hey guys, editing Amanda here. Um, I completely forgot that I forgot to mention the 15th book. Um, in this video because I didn't own it and that is Free Lunch by Rex Ogle. Um, this is a non-fiction middle grade book that documents Rex Ogle's life living in poverty and being in the free lunch program at his school. The stigma that went with that, it has a lot to do with child abuse. It's definitely not one that I would just hand to a kid, um, but this is definitely a book that you're going to want to read and share with children in your life. Um, give them pers some perspective on what it's like to live in those circumstances. Um, it just follows and documents Rex's childhood living in you know, like I said, in poverty, um, not knowing where his next meal was going to come from, um, having a mom that didn't really provide for him in the way that he needed. And um, yeah, anyway, it was phenomenal as an adult to read this book and just gain perspective. Um, I think that's why it made it on this list. But I did uh, want to mention that I forgot to talk about that one when I was filming this video originally. So go check that one out as well. So Let's see if I can stack all these up. All right, here we go. These, oh, can I get it all in frame? Probably not. Woo! I'm gonna drop them. Are all of my favorite, absolute favorite, cream of the crop, middle grade picks. I'm gonna drop these everywhere. Woo, can you see them all? So these are all of them. Like I said, I hope that you find some great recommendations in this list. Have you read any of these? Let me know what you have thought about them. I mean, if you absolutely hated them, you can probably keep that opinion to yourself. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, like, let me know how you felt about them. What are some of your absolute favorite middle grade reads? Let me know that as well. Are you so excited for middle grade March? I am so excited. I'm excited to find some new favorites to add the, to this list this year. And that's going to do it for today. So I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope that you stick around and subscribe. And until next time, see ya.